This is Shannon Moore with Quest Software. Today I'm going to show you some of the new features and enhancements that we have added to the Query Builder in this release of Toad for Data Analyst. We introduced the ability to add date ranges to a query a couple of releases ago, but there wasn't a way to define when a quarter or period began. In this release, we've added customizable calendar types for date ranges. This includes fiscal, academic, or custom calendars so that you can modify these date ranges to meet your business needs. So let's take a look at the fiscal calendar. I already have an order date column selected, so I click the where condition for that column. Then under calendar, I select fiscal and click the edit calendar button. And you'll notice that my current start month is March, my fiscal calendar type is normal, fiscal mode, first day of the month, and week starts on Sunday. Let's preview the calendar as it currently is. Okay, if I change my start month to January, you'll notice that the calendar changes. And my fiscal calendar type, I use a 445 calendar, so I'll select that. So if I click Apply, now my fiscal calendar is the default, and then if I select the last quarter, this will be based on the new values. You can select similar options for the academic calendar as well. Let's check that out. So go back to where condition, select academic, edit the calendar. You can see we have periods, we have four periods currently beginning with January, starting the week on Sunday. And you can change that to, say, six periods, and it will update as well. If for some reason the other calendar formats do not suit your needs, you can also define a custom calendar. And for that, you select Custom, click Edit Calendar. And right now it has one period. Let's say we had, say, three periods you can rename it to, let's see, my calendar. And then you would just select the date from and to. And you can set it up however you need to set it up for your purpose. Now one of the challenges with the date range format in the past was that you there wasn't a way to use the date range syntax in other applications such as SQL Plus. And I'll show you that. We still have our original fiscal uh, where condition date range. And in the past what you would see would just be orders dot order underscore date equals calendar fiscal last quarter. But that's all you could see with that information. So there was no way to tell what the underlying syntax was for it. So for this release what we've done is we've added a link. Now if you click this link you can hover over it and see the value. But if you actually click it uh, a dialog box opens and you can actually then copy and then paste that into another application. Now another great enhancement that we've added to the where condition window is to automatically load the bind variable name in the form tab for you. So let's look at that now. If you click the where condition, select the form tab, and notice that colon order underscore date is selected automatically. In the past you would have had to enter that in that field. So if we click OK and then run the query, the bind variables window pops up. Now the great thing with this is we've also added an enhancement in this field. In, in the previous release you had to manually enter the date, time, timestamp, uh, values in the value field. And sometimes that can be a little tricky to remember, especially if you can't recall what your system format is. Well now you have a pop-up calendar that you can use. And let's look at that now. Now you would think this is a normal calendar, but the really great thing in, in addition to just selecting something and using the arrows or the time, you can also zoom in. So if you click or zoom out. In this case if you click October, it will zoom out and let you see all of the months. If you click the 2010, it will zoom out again and then let you select a year. This is a really fast way to look for a year. Let's say you need something from 2009 or 2000. It's much easier then to browse to and find that date and time. You click OK. And there you go. And there was no values for that, but normally there would be. 
Now note that this uh, bind variable calendar feature is also available in the editor window. For Oracle users, we fixed a bug where the last value for a date or date time data type was not remembered in the bind variable window. And that was especially frustrating when you were having to manually type in the date. So let's look at that. So if I, I have my bind variable value already set that we set in the calendar, if I run the query again, notice it's already selected much easier than having to retype that. So that's another great enhancement that I think everybody's going to really appreciate it for Oracle users. Now another great enhancement that we've added, let me get back to the diagram window. So if you select add all columns, and let's select add all columns for this. Now in previous releases, if you wanted to group by, add a group by clause, what you would have to do is manually select, oops, select each one that you wanted to group. But sometimes, you want to group all of the columns that you've selected. So for this release, and you'll notice that you'll have the little uh, group by symbol there. For this release, what we've added, if you right click in the diagram pane, not on the table itself, and you select add group by, what it's going to do is add a group by clause to all columns that you've selected in all tables. So that's a really great time saving feature for you. Not to remove this feature, the simplest way is to just clear the columns that you don't want grouped. In this case, I'm going to just start over. Now, this last set of features that I'm going to show you relate to the results tab. These apply to both the editor and the query builder, so you'll find it easy to use in either one. So if I select some of the columns to run for a query, quantity. Okay, if I click Run Query, and I get my value set. Now I have five sets because I've run some data earlier. And normally what happens is when you get to five sets, our default is set so that the next one will then replace set one. It will be set six and we'll start overwriting all the result sets. All right, so I'll show you that now. If we run the query again, and then again, there's set six. But let's say for set two, I ran something and got some interesting results that I want to keep. Now I can pin this result set, so there's a little push pin there. If I just click it to where it's in a vertical position, then when I run this query again, instead of replacing set two, it will go to set three and replace that one. So let's try that again. And there you go. And so it will let you preserve the result sets that you really need to maintain um, as you're testing things. Now if you decide to close a result set, in the past, in previous releases, what it would do would be renumber everything. So if you close set 7, for example, it would go, originally this would be set 1, set 2, set 3, set 4, set 5. If you close set 3, which is now set 7, it would then make set 4, set 3, set 5 would be set 4, and so on. And now what we do is we preserve whatever set value, whatever set number it is, we'll preserve that value. All right, so let's show you that. So if I right click and select close for current result set, and you can see you've got set six, two, there's no set three now, which it normally would have been four and five. I hope you enjoy all the new features in the Query Builder and in Toad for Data Analyst version 2.7, and please let us know if you have any feedback.